a punk rock puppet show, more members than Slipknot, and they absolutely suck. Green Jelly. All right, so doing this at a mask actually kind of sucks. And if we were at a green jello show, I'd have to drive this in somebody's head. Unfortunately, today I'm here recording by myself. So the clip you just saw was a video that I actually took with my phone on stage at the recent green jelly show at Gaza's Pub in Halifax, Nova Scotia. If you guys haven't heard of Nova Scotia, look it up in Google Maps. For the rest of you, well, you probably know where it is, or you don't care. Green Jelly was formed in 1981 in Kenmore, New York, by Bill Manspeaker. So, they were a band that never wanted to be a good band. In fact, they claimed they suck, and you, as an audience member and a fan, they want you to actually say that Green Jello sucks. In fact, if you go to one of their shows, you're gonna be chanting Green Jello sucks a lot. So, I mean, you hear them referred to as Green Jello and Green Jelly. Well, here's why. So in 1993, Green Jello released their album, Serial Killer, and they had a huge MTV hit with the song Three Little Pigs. If you have not heard it, look it up right now and then come back and watch the rest of this video right here. With the huge fame and the name Green Jello, even though it wasn't spelled the same, Kraft Foods, who owned the trademark for Jello, actually, they wanted to start a lawsuit and that ended up change, making the band change their name to Green Jelly. But the names are actually interchangeable. People still yell, Green Jello sucks. They're still referred to as Green Jello or Green Jelly. Doesn't really matter that the name, they're, st they're still Green Jello. It's just legally they go by the name of Green Jelly these days. Serial Killer is actually kind of interesting and in how the band actually ended up becoming somewhat popular. Since the, the band did form in 1981, so 12 years later, they released Serial Killer on, I believe, Zoo Records. I think it was owned by BMG or one of those labels like that. And anyway, they claimed to be a video only band, which really prompted to get some attention from this label. So they signed them, but it was a bluff. I guess the band knew nothing about making videos really. So they ended up having to learn. So they had a whole video record, which was really entertaining. But Serial Killer also had an audio soundtrack that was released later as an album. So the Three Little Pigs video is pretty interesting. It's a claymation video. Three Little Pigs, they're building houses and the big bad wolf, he's coming to blow them down, just like in the fairy tales. However, by the time you get to the end of it, we have uh, Pig Nugent's son, who has an architecture degree, builds a house, the wolf can't blow it down as much as he huffs and puffs. And then they call up 911 and then Rambo shows up and shoots the wolf dead. You see a little clip of a live show in that video and it looks like absolute chaos. And I have to say the shows are exactly what that little clip looked to be like. I'll explain in a little bit. On the Serial Killer record, there is the single Serial Killer, which has a video of all your famous serial mascots, your Lucky Charms guy, your Rice Krispie Squares people, and we have Toucan Sam, and well, Toucan Sam's killing them, and you know, the serial companies did not take kindly to this video. They thought this was absolutely offensive that their mascots were, you know, killing each other. I personally think it's absolutely hilarious that they released something like this. But you know what? That's the great thing about rock and roll is that there's some controversy and it shouldn't be a friendly thing really all the time. Like you gotta have some edge to it. I think Green Jello just nailed it with that, but it was still like really, really entertaining stuff. So I feel like since we're talking Green Jelly, I should probably wear a mask and do this. So we're gonna try to play the bass lines for Three Little Pigs and the Bear Song. Let's try Three Little Pigs up first. <laughs> Pop it, pop it. 
I'll blow your house in. Huffing, puffing, I'll blow your house in. Huffing and a puffing and I'll blow your house in. Huffing and a puffing and I'll blow your house in. All right, let's try the bear song. That's one thing that uh, Green Jelly likes to pride themselves on crude musicianship and having stupid masks on. So there's your bass lines if they're messed up. Whatever, I'm wearing a mask so I can't see what I'm doing and yeah, they're pretty easy songs to play anyway. Back to the show. So other fun facts about Green Jelly is that they had a lot to do with Tool back right before they were Tool, I believe. Um, and Three Little Pigs, you know, the lot mother hair on the chinny chin chin. That part is actually sang by Maynard Keenan, the singer of Tool. And Tool just released some new music and Tool's an absolutely massive band. Um, I believe that Tool's first show was actually in Green Jelly's Loft, which is pretty entertaining. Danny Carey played drums for Green Jelly for a little while at least. I'm not sure how long. Pretty bit crazy to think like that little band, they were really helping Tool out a lot, like to get them going. And then Tool just exploded to what they are today. And it's, they're absolutely massive. And, but if you want to talk about massive bands, Green Jelly has approximately 800 plus, I think 850 members worldwide. This is quite entertaining. So Bill's man speaker here is a very, very smart man as far as I'm concerned for doing this. So instead of having to have a whole band you have to tour around the world with and to tour and do that stuff costs a lot of money. And it's really hard to keep a band together, especially a touring band because it's just so tough on somebody's life to actually dedicate that much time to touring. He has a band in like every city in North America, Europe, all these, maybe not all of Europe, but like all around the world, there's a whole, there's a band in every city for him to play with. Apparently that every time that he flies in, the band picks him up and they do the show or a number of shows in that area. And that's, and then he flies back to Hollywood wherever he lives. So anybody who's played with the band is considered a member of Green Jelly. So that's really kind of cool. That's where I said they have more members than Slipknot. Well, there's 800 and some. I don't know if they've played one show with them or just get a sporadic show once in a while. I have no idea how he even lines these people up. I guess maybe social media or something like that. I still think it's absolutely awesome that he actually has franchise bands around the world. That's really, really cool. So I went to their show a few weeks ago at Gus's Pub. I knew not a whole lot about the band and they played with a band called Meat Sweats and another band, I believe they were called Path. The Path was a local thrash band and the Meat Sweats definitely fit the vibe of a Green Jelly show. They wanted to suck and Green Jelly and them were just like going back and forth. Well, we want to suck the most. No, you suck more, blah, 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 blah. I thought they were pretty funny. So I got standing outside with a guy that I knew that I hadn't seen in some time. And he was a huge Green Jelly fan back when we were like 12 years old. And uh, he showed up with his own mask. And then they come out with a huge pile of masks. And they're like, well, do you guys want to be part of the punk rock puppet show? And it's like, but if you decide to join, you can't go back inside. Okay, so went in, used the bathroom, got back out the door. And then it's like, screw it, let's find a mask. I didn't get sick from it, so this is, a, this is a good thing because they've been worn by a lot of people at a lot of shows, so I was a little worried I would get the flu or something. But anyway, I said, screw it. I ended up being pumpkin head for the show, mostly because I'm a Halloween fan. And I thought the pumpkin would be pretty cool. Anyway, so how it works, I believe, is that there's a band that's playing before Green Jelly, and they're, like, they're doing sound check or something. So, the, so then Bill goes in, and kicks the whole band like off the stage and whatnot, or a number of the members of the band. And he starts 
his show and everybody's yelling green jello sucks you could hear it from outside i didn't actually see it i only had an idea of what was going on inside the pub he wouldn't do the show until everybody was wearing masks so we're all lined up outside and when bill yells bring in the puppets they open the doors and you basically just run through the crowd as fast as you can jump on the stage and they're going to play the song three little pigs at least at the show i was at and uh, there was hardly any room on the Gus's Pub stage, and it's literally packed with a, a lot of members of the franchise band. I'm not even sure if they were all plugged in. And all of us goons there wearing a bunch of masks, just jumping around on a little stage. I know the guitar player was a little concerned that I was gonna bump into his uh, Mesa Boogie rectifier. Those are not exactly a cheap amp, in case you're watching this and don't know what a Mesa Boogie rectifier is. It's a guitar amp that's not cheap, great for metal. Anyway, uh, he was a little bit worried that I would jump into that. So we did that. And then you have to, after that, you get off the stage. And if you're wearing that mask, you have to jump around in the mosh pit, which of course it did. And it was super fun. I haven't moshed in years. So we're jumping around and whatnot. Really nice girl shared a drink with me, which was really cool. I guess she didn't have a cold because so I didn't get sick. So that's a good plus. Thank you, Caitlin. You were awesome. I don't even know if you'll ever actually see this. The whole idea is if you wear the masks, you gotta wear it, at least for the first so many songs. If you take that off and he notices, he's going to yell at you in the crowd. And I mean, this is the kind of show where the singer, he does yell at the crowd. If you don't do what he wants you to do, he's gotta let you know that you're screwing up and you need to do this the right way. I only saw him really yell at one person. I got yelled at once when I was still wearing the mask. He's like, pumpkin head. Get in the pit! And anyway, so I had to run into the center to get the pit going and whatnot. But if you're tired of wearing a mask, you can take the mask off and you take that and you drive it on somebody else's head. And let's be honest, being in that mask was absolutely disgusting. It was hard to breathe. It's hard to see. I wear glasses. I can't see with those glasses. So I had them on. Anyway, jumped around. It was a great time. By the end of it, nobody was wearing masks anymore. We were just having a wicked time and whatnot. So meeting Bill Manspeaker was actually really fun. He was a really nice guy to talk to. And uh, anyway, after hearing Green Jello socks uh, about six times during the show, you know, it was, a, it was a good chaotic time. It's the kind of rock show your mom and dad didn't want you to go see, but you went anyway, you know. And I think that's wicked because so many shows are just boring. You just stand around and you watch the shows and watch the musicians and sometimes that's really awesome with certain bands but with green jelly i feel like the songs are more about the live show than writing good songs and that's why green jello sucks well, sort of but they suck you don't suck as much as you think you do but i know bill would want to hear green jello sucks anyway that was an awesome show I'd like to thank Bill for actually letting me uh, do that, participate in the show. Definitely one of the most chaotic shows I've ever participated in. That's pretty cool. So it wasn't just standing there watching a the show. It was a whole experience. Anyway, guys, Green Jello absolutely sucks. If you have not listened to them before, definitely go check them out and check out their new song, Silence of the Sponge. I'm sure if you love SpongeBob SquarePants, you're gonna love that song. Click up over here to the subscribe button. I'll be back with more Bauer Power mixtape sometime soon. Check out any of the videos over here. You guys all have a great day. Green Jello sucks. See ya.